Hey, what's happening guys? Today, we've got a new power supply to take a look at. This is the Matrix MPS 3206 power supply. And this is a very nice programmable power supply by Matrix Technologies. And it was uh, provided to us free of charge for our consideration. So today we're just gonna take a look at it, check out some of the features, open it up, have a look inside. This is uh, available from a number of places, including Amazon, and the price is right around $60, $57.99, which is uh, just about the same price as my uh, Tech Power that is my uh, standard bench power supply. So, if this thing turns out to be uh, worthwhile, that's not a bad price, especially for a programmable power supply, which has some very nice features to keep you from accidentally setting some wrong settings so first of all this is a 32 volt 6 amp power supply and you can see here i have it whoa hello better tighten that up i've just got it hooked up to a, a 12 volt bulb and i have a multimeter on here so that we can monitor the voltage being put out i have a set for 12 volts I believe I have it set for 300 milliamps. Yeah. So, in order to set this thing, let's let's take a, a zoom in here and get a little bit closer. You can see we're at 12 volts. It's at uh, 254 milliamps, and it's in constant voltage mode. In order to set it, you have to press the V or I button, and that sets one of the digits blinking. Then you click the encoder. To determine which digit that you want to change and then when it stops blinking you're right back where you were and what's nice is now I can turn this knob and nothing is going to happen so it saves you from accidentally changing your uh, settings it also has a supply on off which is really nice and of course it is programmable for instance I have uh, number one program 5 volts we can turn that on you can see that is in a uh, mode one now if I want to change this all I have to do is turn that off and let's see let's go uh, We'll go for 7 volts at 300 milliamps. We'll power that up. You can see it's on. And then we just hold the button until that little light pops on. And now we're at that setting. And if we zoom out here a little bit, you can see on the multimeter, it's very accurate. So seems to work out quite well now it also has over voltage and over current protection which you can set the same way you hold this for a few seconds and there you have your over voltage and there's your over current to set your maximum so that is that is a global setting for the entire power supply now, if we go back here to our number one setting, we'll turn it on. You can see we are in constant voltage mode and our bulb is dimly lit. And we can put it in constant current mode simply by adjusting our current down. And now we are in constant current mode. And we also have the overcurrent protection on. You can see the bulbs barely lit there whatsoever. So this is a switching power supply, which means you're not going to find a big old transformer inside of it. Let's have a look inside and see what you will find. All right, there are eight screws holding the top on. Remove that. And this is a standard power supply build. You have the plastic uh, front panel with all your controls and then a bent steel frame with this little 
T-bar across the top. Now looking at it from the back, we have the IEC plug with the integral fuse holder. And there is our ground and it is screwed on to the board and then screwed on to that mount which is riveted yeah riveted directly to the case so we have a pretty strong connection there and these uh pc board screws have double washers a uh, flat washer and what appears to be a lock washer in there as well And we've got a big heat sink here in the middle containing our MOSFETs and diodes for all of the switching. I'm just looking for any uh, anything glaring jumping out at me. Hmm. There's our main switching MOSFET kind of hidden back in there and it is an IRFP 250M from uh, International Rectifier. They've done a nice job using large, I don't, can't tell if quite, I think those are probably 2 watt resistors there. There's a 5 watt resistor. And the transformer looks pretty nice as well. Now here's something interesting. I don't know how well you're going to be able to see this. Let me see if I can... Come on. Zoom in there. Look directly under the transformer. You see that blue thing? Looks like a mauve. Right across the transformer. So they've definitely taken some pains. We've got good separation. It's like about two millimeter separation there between those tracks. Although I don't see any anti-tracking slots in the board. You know, if you got if you got good separation, it's really not a problem. But that's something I would like to see. Uh, Q U N I O Quinio brand capacitors. You know, Shenzhen flavor of the day. Got our opto isolator back here, or is that not an opto isolator? Is it? No, that is a uh, full bridge rectifier. Hmm. Kind of a small one. Yeah, there's our there's our opto there. Then we've got a couple of uh, unpopulated spots for. A diode and a capacitor. Now, these big film capacitors kind of hanging off here, floating in the breeze. Don't quite like that. Let me see if I can zoom in here. You can see right there. There's not a lot of space between that screw and that unprotected leg of that capacitor. I mean, it's pretty solid it's not going anywhere but I would have liked to have seen you know maybe some heat shrink on that as well but otherwise I mean it's looking uh, like a decent build and of course you know something with electronics like this only time will tell is it gonna last well I can't tell you right up front but generally with these kind of things you know I do a review six months to a year later you know, put them in use, run them, and see how they do. So that's what we'll be doing with this. So yeah, I like this. Again, this is the uh, Matrix MPS3206. And like I said, for the price of what I paid for a non-programmable power supply, you have a programmable power supply, which is nice because, you know, you could set these up 3.3 volts, 5 volts, 9 volts, 12 volts, whatever you want, and be ready with a, a press of a button to go between and the fact that you actually have to press the set button and then turn the knob makes for a little bit of um, comfort 
you don't have to worry about either you or somebody else in the area accidentally spinning a knob and blowing up a circuit that you've been working on. So, pretty cool. I will add this to my store if you guys are interested, and there will be a link down below. So thanks again to Matrix for sending this out. I'm going to put it in rotation. We're going to use it for a while and see how it does. And thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, give me a thumbs up. Feel free to comment, share, and don't forget to subscribe. Big thanks to all of my patrons who keep this channel going. I couldn't do it without you. And a big thanks to all of you who just watch and comment and are members of the community. That's what really keeps me going is hearing from you guys. And, you know, I read all the comments. I might not answer them all. But I read them to hear what you're saying. That's it. I'm out. Peace. I want to thank you all for watching and spending time with me today. Uh, a community like this is uh, something that we can all be very proud of. So again, thank you very much for all your support of Learn Electronics. Uh, please feel free to check out the Patreon page. A dollar a month is all I ask and uh, really helps keep the channel alive. We also have an Amazon shop where you can buy most of the items that you see on here. And there's a link to it down below.